Game number two here in Shreveport, Louisiana on semifinal Saturday in the 2024 Southern Collegiate Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. Almost set to get underway. Just decided the first semifinal of the day, an upset from Colorado College taking down Trinity in a matchup Getting ready now for the three seed, the host, Centenary Gents, taking on two seed, St. Thomas Kelts. Kelts earning the bye by finishing in the top two in the standings. They're out on the court already, so I'll take you through their five. It'll be Angel Johnson, Nick Anderson, Nicholas Buffalo, Calvin Williams the fourth, and Charles Gadonga. That will get the start for the Celts wearing those gold jerseys, but in the black, playing in their home gold dome, Centenary Gents, the same five that started yesterday's quarterfinal win over the Shriner University Mountaineers, a very close game. The Gents barely got the edge in that one by a final of 76 to 75. It'll be Craig Collier, Seth Thomas, Quentin Beverly, Jalen Bear, and Jacoby Greenleaf, who will round out the starting five. It's going to be Katonga and Greenleaf standing in the circle as the Celts control it, and we're underway. The final Saturday continues. Two more games on the women's side of things will follow this one. But for now, Katanga has it on the near side. He'll give to Williams. Williams the fourth. Very impressive array of shot making that he's shown all season long. As he pulls up for a deep three. Just a little bit too strong. Bounces his second time off the rim. And finally, Beverly comes away with it. He controls and gives to Thomas. Thomas, who was very good yesterday and has been in his whole career here at Centenary. Finished with 20 and 7 as he gets through for his first attempt and knocks it home. That one off the glass. He had to work hard for it, but he made it count. Made everything count in that one point victory yesterday. Victory which earned Coach Dorsey the 100 win mark. On top, Williams gives over to Katonga on the inside. That spin is no good. A little bit strong that time from Anderson. Collier coming the other way for the Gents. Survey is at the top. He'll give over to Beverly. Beverly now in the corner. Bear looking down low. Greenleaf operating one on one against Anderson. That one misses. Excuse me, that looks like it's Nicholas Buffalo who's playing defense and deterred that shot at the rim, gathering the defensive rebound as well. Tonga on the outside. Gives over to Johnson who barrels down. No foul called there as Anderson also shut off in the corner. Williams the fourth, kick out, top of the key. Johnson, his shot is up and it's off to the right. Another defensive rebound for Centenary. Seth Thomas coming back the other way. He'll attack early. He had help defense coming, so he'll pull it back as Bear decides to go. But he's met by Buffalo in the painted area. Other side, looks like Beverly's going to pull up from the corner and he'll cash it. That one is good for two from about 16 feet out. A good start for the home team who has a ton of support here in the Gold Dome. 4-0 lead. Just about two and a half minutes off the clock here in the first half as Calvin Williams is going to go but gets things shut off. That shot from the corner also long, but Katanga gathering the offensive rebound. He lost control of it between a couple of bodies, and Collier will come out of the mix bringing it up the court. 
Seth Thomas fighting for position down low. They'll go the other way. Beverly, he'll cash it in from the corner. It's good. Hot start for the gents here, up 7-0. These two teams split the regular season series one apiece as the Celts are coming back up the court, but both teams won at home. Advantage Centenary playing on their own court. Johnson will give off to Katonga. Anderson to Williams the fourth in the corner. He's trapped there, a long pass. Finally, Anderson wide open. That one also strong. Rough start shooting the basketball for the Celts, and it's a venue that's difficult to shoot in. Lighting a little bit awkward. And Seth Thomas has played here a long time. Skips that one cross court. It's deflected, and ultimately Anderson's going to come away with it. One on one in transition. Somehow contorts his body and gets it to go at the basket. He breaks the seal for the Celts. They got two on the board. Slowing things down just a bit is Collier. Looking for Beverly on the outside. Instead, we'll give to Greenleaf, who hands it right back to Collier. That one knocked away, but still with the hands of the Gents. Right in the paint from about 10 feet. Easy shot for Craig Collier. That one pitched ahead. Anderson catches it. Seth Thomas doesn't want anything go, even after the whistle. Gents happy with this hot start. Already 4.02 off the board. That means it's time for our first media timeout. Even after that St. Thomas bucket, first one on the board of the day. The Gents continuing their good start, answering right back with that Craig Collier 10-foot jumper in the paint. Centenary, a blistering start, four or five from the field. St. Thomas just one of six, and they've taken four threes already, just haven't happened to hit one. Quentin Beverly has got five already. Wasn't a huge factor in Centenary's win yesterday, at least not from a scoring perspective. We mentioned that Thomas contributed 20. Collier added 12. Singleton and Hall each off the bench. They had 12 and 11 respectively. Very impressive showing from A.J. Hall yesterday for the Centenary Gents. Didn't have his number called in the first half, but when he came in in the second eight minutes that he did play, provided quite a spark. Knocked down some shots from the outside, even got to the basket and slammed one home. There's our buzzer and both teams back out on the court. Media timeout number one taken care of. It'll be the Celts ball underneath their own basket. They have 24 seconds on the shot clock now. It's Calvin Williams, the fourth is set to get this one inbounded. Got Johnson, who will give it to him in the corner. Trap there. Collier doing everything he can to guard legally, but a little bit too much contact from his hip. He's going to send Johnson into the stands, but not before a foul's called. Already two personal fouls against the Gents. One of them going on Collier, the other on Greenleaf. Johnson will catch it in the backcourt and bring it up. Gives back over to Cal Williams, the fourth, straight away. Now in the corner to Katonga. Just eight, now seven on the shot clock. Calvin Williams having to go late. Anderson catching underneath the basket. Tries to find a teammate because he was pinned too deep, but nothing there. The ball gets turned over. That one poked away. Johnson trying to chase it down, but it ends up in the St. Thomas bench, and it will stay here with Centenary. Collier catches. And is calling for the offensive play. He'll hand off this one going to Bear. Now to Greenleaf. Back to Bear, who will take the screen, split the defense. Nice move to get through, but too strong off the back iron. And Calvin Williams will control and bring it back for the Celts. Switches it up to Johnson. In the corner to Anderson. Back up to Johnson and across to the Williams the fourth. Johnson sending Calvin Williams the fourth through. Getting the ball back now, going baseline, trying to feed it to the opposite block where Nicholas Buffalo was waiting for it, but Seth Thomas 
defensive fiend in the conference as Bear is found in transition and he makes it count. Nice pass court, cross court pass from Seth Thomas. Finding Bear in stride, he rises up and hits it. A 12-2 advantage, already a double digit lead for the Gents. Who took care of business in this building the last time that these two faced off. Calvin Williams, the fourth, going with just five seconds down the shot clock. He's hounded, gonna have to force something. Barely gets that one off, but doesn't get any rim. Centenary fired up, and so are their fans. Everybody on their feet. Some changes being made for the Gents. Now nearly six minutes gone in this half. Currently with the ball in his hands. He has it knocked into the backcourt. This one taken away by the Celts of St. Thomas. Anderson catching on the wing, choosing to go to the basket. Leans in, just off balance, a little bit too much. And his shot is too strong. Back the other way, Singleton with the ball at the top of the key, waiting for a screen from Greenleaf, but it's poked away and it never comes. Beverly has it on the outside, he gives to Thomas. It looks like that's Mirage that's playing out there, giving it off to Greenleaf. Gives it back to Thomas, he'll rise up for three. That one's good, he knocks it home. Sitting there, he can do no wrong. Jens out to a quick 15-2 advantage. Calvin Williams trying to slow things down. Almost loses the handle right there, but kept his hand on top of it. Angel Johnson who gives it back, back and forth between the two at the top. Calvin Williams thinks about it, back to Johnson. He'll distribute to the corner. Anderson pulls up and finally, St. Thomas converts from beyond the arc. Desperately needed to see that ball go through after Sidney had ballooned their lead to 13. Now back down to 10. See if St. Thomas can string together any sort of stop. That one is off the mark, a little bit strong off the back rim. Back in transition. Quick ball movement, Anderson again, top of the key. He leaves this one short. Rebounded by Singleton, who's being pounded in the backcourt. It's Calvin Williams, the fourth, who's staying right on the ball. Sliding his feet well, and he comes away with a steal. Going straight to the basket, trying to ride the defender. A lot of contact. Calvin Williams comes down awkwardly. No foul called as he rolls his ankle after the made basket. It was Mirage who was getting back in stride with Calvin Williams the fourth. Induced Calvin Williams the fourth's awkward landing right there. He's going to head to the bench. He'll take a seat next to the coaching staff. It'll be both him and Katonga checking out of the game at the moment. Ricky Altamirano in for the Celts. Also out there, Marion Williams wearing number two. Almost thought about the shot. Active hands for the Celts. See what's called there, it is a foul. It looked like Angel Johnson in diving for the basketball took out the legs of Beverly. Very aggressive defense in the last several minutes. We're now under the 12 minute mark. 11.55 remaining in the first half. And the first eight minutes have absolutely flown by. Gents jumping out to an early 15 to two advantage. St. Thomas settling in. They have the last five and they've strung together a couple of stops on this end of the court. Very active hands. Both of these teams opting not to play with a true stereotypical big man in their starting five. For Centenary, it's Greenleaf who is able to bang down low and on the other side, Nicholas Buffalo provides a little bit of rim protection for the Celts. But overall, each of these rosters features a number of players that are very active, very switchable, still have very good size and length. The two versus three seed matchup here in the SCAC tournament, a St. Thomas team that finished the regular season 
at a 20 and five mark overall. They went 12 and four in conference play. Centenary finishing their regular season 14 and 11, nine and seven in SCAC affairs. And it's the Gents who are out on the court first. Celts joined them and we're back underway. It's Mirage being checked by Marion Williams. It's gonna give to Greenleaf, being pushed about eight feet outside of that three-point line. As Beverly catches, gives back to Greenleaf, who operates one-on-one. -on -one. Nice up and under move, putting the ball back in his right hand to avoid the defender, but just fell off the rim for him, and that one poked out of bounds. It will go the opposite direction for St. Thomas. Altamirano gives to Johnson, who is guarded in the backcourt. Mirage giving a little bit of space as he brings it across the timeline. But Johnson using the screen from Altamirano, a little bit of separation right there. Big man will give it back. Buffalo was open on the block for just a moment as Centenary has moved into a 1-3-1 zone. Altamirano catching, nice up and under move. Finishes it, keeping that pivot foot, getting the defender off his feet. It'll be Singleton controlling the rock for the Gents at the moment. He gives cross court. Beverly going, giving to Greenlee, who thought about the three, tried to get past his defender and eventually finds Singleton in the corner. Now with 10 seconds on the shot clock, he'll give to Mirage going one-on-one, -on -one, tries to avoid going through the chest of Angel Johnson. In the process, he misses that shot off the rim. Into the corner, Anderson thought about the three. He's trapped there, but is able to get it away cleanly. Marion Williams giving to Angel Johnson, who receives direction from Coach Anthony Medina on the sideline. Hounded out there near half court. Altamirano gives to Marion Williams with about five. That one misses long, though. Angel Johnson skying for the rebound. The referee is saying he pushed off of the back of Mirage underneath the rim. Have some more changes right now. Collier back into the game for the Gents for the first time. Braden Board out there for Centenary. Thomas controls, gives back to Collier. Board pops out and will give it the other direction as Collier moves through. Going to the rim, a nice hop step right there from Beverly. Just kind of an awkward landing and couldn't elevate to get to the rim. Buffalo the other way, gets that one up at the basket, but it's no good. Gatonga tried to follow and eventually Centenary corrals it to come the other way. Singleton regains the play. He operates, trying to navigate the screen right there. He gets all the way to the basket because of it. It swirls around the basket and eventually it falls. Braden Board now playing over the top as he's trying to apply some pressure in the backcourt. Playing the point of attack, swings after that one, but Marion Williams was able to get it across the court to Altamirano cleanly. Williams pushes Altamirano through, but faces a trap. On the other side, Katonga switches play to Williams, who's gonna rip through, trying to get to the basket, but Collier catches him with a hip check there. It's gonna be his second personal foul, almost 11 minutes gone in this first half. A half that currently sees Centenary ahead by a score of 17 to nine. Aaron Williams will put this one back into the front court as Calvin Williams the fourth is back on the floor. He has the ball in his hands with under 10 seconds. Altamirano has that shot blocked by Seth Thomas, closed out nicely and defended it in the corner. Singleton will give to Thomas on this end of the court as the Celts are scrambling a little bit and Board will take the shot. He'll knock it home from straight away. The big man makes it count. Gents back out by double digits. Still in this 1-3-1 zone that is extending well beyond the three-point line. Altamirano will catch. Calvin Williams will pull from way downtown, and he catches it. Again, he's complaining to the referees because he landed 
on the foot of a gent. Rolling his ankle a little bit in the process. He's still very ginger out there. He left the game originally because he rolled it going to the basket. Maybe some frustration as he gives a shoulder to Mirage away from the basketball. Get called for the foul right there. Only his first personal. But it'll slow play down just a little bit. Seth Thomas will head to the baseline, set to get this one put back in play. Go over the top to Board. Board handling it one-on-one -on -one with Katonga. Eventually, Singleton will come and take it from him. Singleton stepping back. Board at the top of the key again. Will get by his defender. Kicks to the corner. Five on the shot clock. Singleton has to go. He does, and it just falls off the rim. The tip out will be controlled by Centenary. Long possession resulted in a good look at the basket, but they'll get a second chance. Seth Thomas one-on-one -on -one with Katonga. Nice dribble moves. Beverly in the corner. That one is up, but it's long. Off the back rim, ricochets. Such a way that Anderson can bring it up the court. Centenary hustling back on defense, however. Closing down lanes to the basket, and the Celts have to draw it back. 15 seconds remaining as Altamirano navigating on the outside. He gives to Williams the fourth. Kick to the corner. Marion Williams, his counterpart, is fouled on the three-point attempt. Seth Thomas immediately calling for a flop to the referee, but his appeal likely not going to provide anything. It's our first stoppage of play under eight minutes. 7-10 remaining in the first period. That's why each of these teams are headed to their respective benches. That was only Seth Thomas's first foul. He faced a little bit of trouble in the foul department yesterday, but not so much that he had to miss significant minutes. He's the one guy that really need on the court you're also going to try and make an upset in this semifinal. Saw one upset in the early game today. Colorado College taking down Trinity University. So they'll move on to tomorrow's championship game. Colorado winning yesterday in quarterfinal number one, taking down the University of Dallas. On this side of the bracket, of course, was Centenary who beat Shriner University and advanced to today. Trying to join Colorado as a lower seed playing on a third consecutive day. Right now, their shooting percentages helping them out mightily. Eight of 16 from the field, good for 50%, and four of five from beyond the three-point arc. 80% from downtown. St. Thomas struggling out of the gates a little bit. 31% from the field, just 22% on two of nine shooting from three-point range. Neither of these teams have yet to take any free throws, so Marion Williams will step to the line for the first attempts for either squad. First one is away, and Williams makes it count. Marion Williams, a very good shooter from everywhere on the court for this St. Thomas team. Nearly 40% from beyond the three-point arc on the year. An 83% shooter from the free throw line. He's good on his second as well. He was in the corner beyond that three-point line. So the third one is in his hands and is on its way. Good showing at the free throw line for Marion Williams. Knocks home all three and St. Thomas slowly but surely working back into this one. They trail by just five after going down 13 in the early going. Singleton steps behind the screen and puts up a three, but he misses it long as Altamirano fighting for the rebound with Seth Thomas. Both of them pushing that ball towards the referee. The referee will say it was Thomas who touched it last. So Altamirano will retreat to the baseline, set to put this one in play. Board playing over the inbounder at the moment. No problem getting advanced to Gatanga, who gives back to Marion Williams. About five seconds to get it across the timeline, and with that full court pass, they will. 
Give from Williams the fourth is back to Marion Williams. Over to Altamirano operating as Williams the fourth steps into the corner. Thought about the step back three. A nice cross court pass for Buffalo who rises and puts it home. A great look right there from Ricky Altamirano finding his big man counterpart on the opposite block. Buffalo elevating and cutting the deficit to three. Board will rise up from straight away. That one off the iron, no good. Just a little bit to the left. A one and done, very short offensive possession for Centenary. Altamirano rips through against Board. Katonga from the short corners, no good. Altamirano tries to keep it alive. Tracking it down there is Marion Williams, who awkwardly throws it into the paint. That one is good with the foul. Awkward play in this near side corner. There's a couple of players were trying to track it down. Marion Williams seemed unsure of what to do with the basketball. Just tipped it back into the playing field. Not sure if he thought he had stepped out and wasn't established on the court. One way or another, it works out quite well for the Celts, who can now tie this basketball game as Nicholas Buffalo made the shot despite pretty heavy contact. Steps to the free throw line and rattles that one home. We are tied. This one neck and neck in the first 16 minutes, 20 apiece. Seth Thomas trying to break the tie, operating one-on-one, -on -one, going through Gatanga. That one well strong. Doesn't draw any iron off the backboard. Calvin Williams will give it ahead to Ricky Altamirano. Dribbles through at Williams. Trying to overload this zone. Gives it to Williams the fourth. They do so. Gatonga up and under. Nice recovery from this centenary gents defense. The Celts had them wildly out of position. They overloaded it. Got the ball to Calvin Williams who was trapped in the corner. Was able to get it on the block, and then the opposite block was wide open. But a great challenge at the rim as Altamirano steps back. Calvin Williams fourth, wide open for three. It's too long. Gatonga going to get charged with an offensive foul, though. Maybe a little bit of a push right there as he was trying to grab the offensive rebound. It's just his first personal, though. Four team fouls against St. Thomas, five against Centenary. Almost 15 minutes gone as A.J. Hall checks in in the first half today. As this one's knocked away, Bear took it right out of the hands of Gatanga, and he's going to go straight to the basket. Now we'll pull it back just a little bit. He'll give it. It's Greenleaf operating at the top of the key. One-on-one -on -one with Buffalo. Puts his shoulder down back to Hall. One-on-one -on -one with Altamirano. Help comes. This one off the Bear. Off the window. Good. Big time shot fading to his right. And the bank's open on a Saturday. Gents pull ahead by three as soon as the Celts were able to knot this one up. Altamirano gives to Marion Williams, gets the ball back. Now Marion Williams, several feet outside the three point line. His shot is too strong. And the Gents are out and running. It's Beverly putting his head down straight to the rim, and that one nearly falls. Maybe a bit too much momentum. That one was strong off the backboard. Hit the iron. Just bounced out. Beverly stepping to the free throw line. It's going to be Centenary's first free throw attempts of the game. Nearly 16 minutes into this half. First one is up, and it's good. Beverly, a solid free throw shooter on the year. Just about 70% from the charity stripe. Has one more coming. As Nick Anderson comes back in and stand on the lane closest to the shooter. No effort for the rebound as that one's also put home. Altamirano gets the ball back after inbounding it. Big man. Playing his role at the top of the key, doing a little bit of handling of the basketball. Calvin Williams, the fourth, hounded out near midcourt. Buffalo catching right about 10 foot. Floater is a little bit too strong. And Mirage will bring it back the other direction. 
Him and Greenleaf trying to play a two-man game, navigating screen right there, but Bayer gets the ball on the other wing, ripping through. And then Altamirano was just a bit too close. Some contact between the legs as those two were tangled up. And this stoppage at 345 remaining in the first half will send us into our final media timeout of the period. Centenary leading this one 25 to 20. And it's largely due to the efforts of Quinton Beverly, who has seven. Jalen Bear, who's added six on two of two from downtown, and Seth Thomas, who has five. The other way, three Celts have contributed five points so far. Nick Anderson, Nick Buffalo, and Calvin Williams the fourth. But still a disparity in the shooting percentages for each of these squads. St. Thomas at 30.4% centenary, over that 40% mark, and shooting very well from downtown, almost 56% in the early going. Both teams not shooting a ton of free throws, but combining to go six for six. As we have Gold Dome rendition of the wave happening, coming from the centenary faithful as the students Fill in the stands a little bit more on this beautiful Saturday afternoon in Shreveport. St. Thomas has broken its huddle. Centenary will join them out on the court. And we're just about set for our last 345 shift in the first half. It's going to be bare who will inbound this one right in front of that St. Thomas bench. Mirage will come out and get it, defended on the outside by Marion Williams. Still two of them going head to head as Greenleaf catches it right about the elbow. He has 10 seconds, but he'll go now. Nice spin move, gets to the middle of the paint, just leaves it to the right. This one batted out, Mirage thought about it for a second, gives to Hall, step through move, jumps through, but can't get it high enough off the backboard. And St. Thomas will clean it up as Altamirano challenged in the backcourt. Nice pass, trying to go up and under is Nick Anderson, flinging that ball up wildly away from the rim, but got hit as he was in the shooting motion. So he'll head to the free throw line. be his first two attempts of the afternoon. First one, a little strong, it'll rim out. And he'll have a second one pending. Very, very good free throw shooter. Better than 88% on the season. He shows it there, making the adjustment, knocking the second one home. This Hall will catch, but give it back to Bear. Hard to miss him, standing out in his green shoes on the court. Greenleaf catching the top of the key, giving back to Bear. Thought about the three. Got the defender off his feet. Hall catches, he'll fire, but that one's too long. Trying to sky for the offensive rebound was Beverly, but Calvin Williams controlling it, just timing the jump perfectly. Altamirano with it out front. Nice pass to the inside. Anderson fading away, misses that one strong, and Hall will give to Bear as the Gents try and get going in transition. Bear not giving the ball off. Anderson swinging his arm in on the inside. No foul called. The miss has the Celts running in transition as Williams the fourth hangs in the air and banks that one in. Impressive shot from Calvin Williams, who's very clearly dealing with a sore ankle. Limped back just a little bit in transition, but playing through the pain nonetheless, but a great feed. Greenleaf on the inside. Benefits from nice find from Beverly. Calvin Williams gives to Altamirano. Back to Williams, he's gonna push Altamirano the opposite side. Still trying to overload. They'll have Calvin Williams the fourth wide open but he misses that one strong, and he hears it from these Centenary faithful. Hall pulling in transition, that one off just a little bit to the right. Bear tracking it down, saving it, but it's gonna set St. Thomas up straight in the defender. Offensive foul. Anderson originally 
was on a trajectory on that left side of the rim, kind of course corrected and went straight through Greenleaf, but Greenleaf had been standing there set in the paint, took quite a hit, but he's rewarded for it. After that offensive foul, Coach Dorsey electing to use a timeout here with 1.38 remaining in the first half. His team currently leading by four points. Gents also in the penalty, still just the one and one. Unlikely that they'll get to the double bonus in the last minute 38 of this half. On the other side, St. Thomas just one foul away from entering the bonus themselves. We'll see what Coach Dorsey might have drawn up. He wanted to slow play down for his team here in the last minute 40 or so. Get some good looks at the basket and hopefully extend their lead beyond four points. It'll be Seth Thomas who brings it across the timeline, dribbling now straight away, top of the key. He'll go to the right side now, dribbling himself. Tried to get that one to the opposite corner. It was Beverly and Mirage waiting over there, but it gets deflected and knocked out of bounds. We'll go over the top to Braden Board. Thought about a backdoor cut coming from Hall for just a second. They'll reset with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Mirage forced out towards half court, trying to push people through. Five seconds left, Beverly will have to launch. It's a little strong, Altamirano has that one fall right to his waist. Just a minute left, Altamirano will be the one to bring it across, but it's tipped away. His pass intended for Calvin Williams, the fourth. Altamirano will step back in bounds. He gave it to Calvin Williams, the fourth, who very quickly took a timeout. So both of these coaches putting some pretty heavy importance in the last minute or so of this first half. Anthony Medina also wanting the opportunity to talk to his team, hoping that they can get a good look at the basket and finish strong as they head into the locker room. Somewhat similar game to what we saw in semifinal number one. Very low scoring in the first half. It was Colorado College who led that affair by four points at the break. It's our margin at the moment. And St. Thomas is going to try and shrink it a little bit. They're headed back out onto the court, and they'll have 21 seconds on the shot clock to get a look off on this possession. It will be Buffalo who triggers it inbounds to Altamirano. Dribbling at Calvin Williams, the fourth. Marion Williams open in the corner. Stumbles as he goes inside. He gets it to Anderson, who missed Buffalo. Empty possession, but a good look in the painted area for the Celts. A.J. Hall getting to the middle of the paint. His backside gets taken out from under him. Calvin Williams, excuse me, Marion Williams, catching a little bit too much of his leg as he was going up into his shooting motion. So Hall rewarded with a couple of shots at the free throw line. Just Marion Williams' first foul, though. Hall goes through his routine, and he knocks the first one down. Centenary now ahead by five. Has the ball in his hands again. No dribble, just taking a moment to gather himself. He puts the second one up, and it's also good. 29-23 advantage for the Gents. So Altamirano brings the ball across. He'll give to Anderson, get it right back. Marion Williams with about a five-second difference on game and shot as Altamirano steps inside. Williams straight away thought about the three, got kicked in the head. Was selling the shot fake well enough to get Beverly up off his feet. Beverly was flying out to the three-point line. Marion Williams recognizing it. 
was trying to attack the basket, spinning, and I think he caught a foot to the back of his head. Looks to be just fine, but it was a shot on the ground. So he will head to the free throw line for just a one and one, but is already three for three from the stripe today. Goes through his routine, and that one is good. Volume increasing just a tad. He's getting set to shoot these free throws, nearing the end of this first half. Centenary Faithful showing their sport in Shreveport. Second one is also good. Seth Thomas will get it in bounds. And Centenary will have the opportunity for the last shot. It will be in Thomas' hands with 15 seconds left. He's just going to let this one dwindle. And he will have the final look in the twilight of this first period. Loses his dribble, gives it up to Braden Board, shuffles his feet, puts one up at the buzzer, and he leaves it short. Doesn't catch the rim. But a very good start to the half from the Centenary Gents. Jumped out to an early 15-2 lead. We're ahead by 13, right out of the gate. St. Thomas has been battling back from behind. Did a very nice job of closing the gap over the last 10 minutes of this first half, but Centenary holding on to this four-point advantage into the locker room. Both teams' shooting percentages dwindling as they do head into the break. Centenary, who started very hot from the field, now under 35%. St. Thomas under 30%. Got about 14.30 on the scoreboard here in the Gold Dome. We'll take a very brief back, brief break, but hope you join us for the second half of action, what is surely going to be a strong finish.
about one minute exactly on the scoreboard here in the Gold Dome. You hear the buzzer sound, and this second half is about set to get underway. Very tightly contested matchup here between the St. Thomas Celts and the Centenary College Gents. Four points separating these two teams. Another 20 minutes will decide who plays in tomorrow's SCAC Conference Championship game. Gents with a narrow advantage through the first 20 minutes. Quinton Beverly, who helped them get there, he had seven points through the first 20. Jalen Bear added six, Seth Thomas with five. On the other side, Calvin Williams doing what he can. He's got seven, Nick Anderson's added six of his own, but they're just a combined five for 16 from the field. Both of these teams struggling to shoot the ball a little bit in that first half. We'll see how easily they settle in here in the second period. Thomas receiving the ball from the referee, gets it into Collier and we're underway. Greenleaf at the top of the key, will give off, he will not, he'll defer to Bear. Underneath the basket, found himself in a double team position. Get it out to Collier, now with about 10 seconds left, Seth Thomas has it at the top of the key and he'll operate over to the wing, that's Bear, it's just a little bit long. Awkward possession out of the halftime break for Centenary. Single digits on the shot clock, really just had to put something up towards the rim. St. Thomas coming back the other way, dealing with this zone that Centenary is rocking with this weekend. Calvin Williams will shoot over the top of it, he leaves it just a little bit short, but away from the ball, trying to grab the rebound. Looks like Nick Anderson got pushed in the back underneath the basket. Centenary getting hit with an early team foul 50 seconds into this second half, and it'll give the Celts another opportunity. Buffalo will catch and give off to Angel Johnson, who will bring it out and set up the offense. He pushes Anderson towards the wing, still just trying to overload Centenary. They've gotten the shooters open in the corners. This time, they'll get the ball to Buffalo, but he is denied on the inside. Very good defense from Centenary that time in the interior. Leaves just three seconds on the shot clock for the Celts. Gonna have to catch and go quickly. Buffalo gets it. He puts it up, but it's knocked away. The shot clock's gonna expire. Loose ball, but finally, the referees stop play. And Collier down on the other end of the court. Might have had an open opportunity at the basket had they not blown it. Seth Thomas taking the ball again. Still no points here in the second half either way. He'll give off to Greenleaf. Thought about putting it over the top. Collier in the corner. Gets denied from going to the basket. On the outside, it's Bear now giving again to Greenleaf, but he wasn't expecting it. Thought it was so wide of himself that someone else had to be behind him when he turned. It was in the bleachers. So he's going to head to the bench, a quick substitution. Singleton will come on for Coach Dorsey. Angel Johnson brings it across the timeline. And switched across, Calvin Williams have it briefly, but now Katonga operating near half court. This zone is pressuring far beyond the three-point arc. Katonga catches, he'll put one up from the three-point line, it's off. Tip to Buffalo, somehow keeps his foot on the ground, but he still can't hit the shot, leaves it a little bit short. Thomas coming back, going against Katanga. Buffalo stepping up, and he forces the miss. Katanga able to control the rebound. Back the other way, Angel Johnson near half court, gives over to Anderson, gets it back, and he'll push his teammate through. Gets it into the corner, overload works this time, but the shot does not, it's a little bit short. Centenary able to control, Calvin Williams trying everything he can to take it away, 
But in the process, he sends it out of bounds, and Centenary will regain possession. Two and a half gone here. Still no points to show for it. First game of the day, we mentioned. Scoring output improved in the second half. Collier finally find a way to put one home. But so far, much of the same. Very stout defense being played, mirroring the first half closely. Angel Johnson pushing Anderson down. He'll give back to the top of the key. Calvin Williams swings across. Katanga surveying, but it'll have to go back to Williams, who has just eight on the shot clock. Catch in the corner, goes to the rim. Just five now. Buffalo recognizes it, and he gets that one up and in. Good gather. Waited for the defenders to come back down before he went to the basket for the uncontested shot. Deficit is four again. Collier being challenged by Johnson. Seth Thomas went to the ground right there, away from the ball. Buffalo throwing his hands up. Not happy with that call. Just his second personal foul, though. Still very clean from each of these teams. No one of any noteworthy foul trouble. A couple of gents that have two, and Angel Johnson has two for the Celts. Altamirano trying to check Seth Thomas, who throws that one to his head coach. No one in the vicinity, and a couple of times we've seen the gents give the basketball away by throwing it into the stands here in the second half. Celts will try to capitalize on it. Johnson, who brings it across, being hounded by Craig Collier. Pass to Williams, to Anderson, to Altamirano. To the inside, but he overshoots Nicholas Buffalo, who had his man pinned behind him. The pass was just too far out in front. Marion Williams will come on, replacing Calvin Williams the fourth. These teams taking care of the basketball for the most part. Just that last one, the eighth turnover for St. Thomas, only five for Centenary. Points coming off those turnovers. Centenary capitalizing more often. They have nine, only four for the Celts. Collier catching on the outside. He'll rise up from about 15 feet, and that one's good. Silky smooth from the mid-range is Craig Collier, and he pushes the lead to six for the Gents. Angel Johnson out top, Nick Anderson across to Marion Williams, and he will push his teammates through. Taking it off the dribble, Anderson sells the shot fake. Altamirano from the top of the key cannot get it to fall. The rebound underneath is Anderson flailing as he was trying to go up, selling the foul right there, and the referees give it to him. But before that, first media timeout with 15.33 remaining in half number two. Take a look now at some of the other statistics for each of these teams outside of their percentages shooting. Just mentioned points off turnovers. St. Thomas doing a nice job winning the rebounding battle at the moment. 25 to 19 edge there, and they've really controlled the offensive glass as well. They have seven boards as opposed to just two on the offensive end for Centenary. Nine fouls for each of these teams. And so far in this half, just a 2-1 split. Centenary committing one more foul in the first four and a half minutes. Both bench has provided seven points. Three second chance points for St. Thomas. So although they are out rebounding Centenary on that offensive glass, don't have a lot to show for it so far. St. Thomas also a little bit of an advantage when it comes to points in the paint, 14 to 10 there, and also in fast break points, six to three in that category. But with that, the second buzzer sounds. Both teams are out on the court, now awaiting Nick Anderson's free throw attempts. He's gone to the line for two attempts already, knocked home one of them. But overall, has struggled a little bit this afternoon. That one also rimming out. 
So a guy who we mentioned earlier shoots closer to 90% from the free throw line. It's just one for three. See if he can make an adjustment this time as well. He does. That one rattles home. Only two of ten from the field is Nick Anderson. One of five from deep. Centenary still with a five-point lead. Back in possession trying to grow it. Marion Williams going to get tagged with a foul against Beverly right there. Who's working hard navigating the perimeter. Williams doing a nice job of cutting off any driving lanes. Just a little bit too much contact with his body that time. Collier will catch. Being defended by Angel Johnson who will give up a couple of feet. Bear swings at the top. Seth Thomas one-on-one -on -one against Altamirano. Will go to his right and it's money. Seth Thomas leaning, falling away. Doesn't matter. Off the glass, good for two. The gents are up seven. Collier checking Johnson out top. He gets the ball back. Absolutely no open lanes. The kick across the court to Altamirano, and his three is off. Two misses for Altamirano this half. A nice second chance opportunity there, but Buffalo can't get it to fall on the inside. St. Thomas back the other way quickly. Seth Thomas thought about pulling it from way downtown, but he'll stay on the ground. Bear will defer. This time he'll take it from straight away. Off just a little bit and a hit on the inside. Bear fouls Angel Johnson. So that's his third personal foul. Jalen Baird now with three personal fouls. Coach Dorsey electing to keep him in the game at the moment. See if St. Thomas can challenge right there, dangerous position. As Buffalo was skying for the ball. Bear was coming in underneath him, but no contact. As Altamirano, a third try, that one also off. Collier catches it, had him go in and transition very briefly, but he gets cut off, and the gents will slow it down wisely. Seven-point game, now under 14. Next stoppage will provide us with another media timeout. N Bear, nifty move, gets him to the rim, but he can't finish. A nice step through and jump stop from Bear. Perfect position at the rim, just a little bit too strong. 13.49 on that stoppage, or on the clock. We'll have to get under 12 minutes for our next media timeout. Nice pass from Altamirano. Thomas was going for the steal. Johnson on the spin, freed himself up. Back down to five as Thomas will give it out. Beverly going into the far corner. He'll kick out Thomas to Bear. Singleton now. He'll shot fake, gets to the middle, but leaves it a little bit short. Good look at the rim, just couldn't get it up over the front. Calvin Williams the fourth, back on. Altamirano to Marion Williams. He'll go to the basket, tries to discard the defender. He makes the shot, but the referee who blew his whistle waves it off. Basket is no good. And the referee is saying this one's going to have to be taken from the baseline as A.J. Hall is coming back in. Finally, Jalen Bear, who a couple of moments ago picked up his third personal, will head to the bench. Calvin Williams, the fourth, will get it inbounded. Hits Buffalo. They get it out top. Altamirano again. This one straight away is good. Fourth time's a charm for Ricky Altamirano. Big time make. St. Thomas cuts further into the lead. Now it's just two. A.J. Hall catching on the wing. Has to pick up his dribble. He gives it back to Collier with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Collier goes, spinning, trying to keep his pivot foot and throws it away as he was trying to find some help. Marion Williams getting back in transition, gives over to Nick Anderson, not fouled. Clean defense played by Seth Thomas right there. Thought about making a pass in transition, flicks the ball to himself, gets all the way to the basket and finishes. Pace of play speeding up here in Shreveport. Seth Thomas now with nine, stretches the lead back out to two possessions. Altamirano gives to Calvin Williams the fourth, not looking to shoot the ball. Altamirano gets it back this time. Inside, Buffalo lays that one up and in. Takes a tumble into the stanchion, but he picks himself back up, and he hustles back on defense. 
Thomas giving to Beverly. He'll pull that from downtown. It's long. And it's tipped out to Singleton. High rebound, hard to time. Kelts weren't able to gather the defensive board. The ball fell to the ground, ultimately corralled by the Gents. Finally, with 11.46, we will get a second media timeout here in the second half. Nick Anderson has now tied Nicholas Buffalo for the team lead in the points column. They have nine apiece for the Celts. On the other side, Seth Thomas leading the way. Tied for that game high with nine of his own. Quinton Beverly adding seven. Craig Collier with six. Nicholas Buffalo is just flirting with a double-double at the moment. Already has ten rebounds. Just one more point for the big fella will get him that designation. St. Thomas, three more field goal attempts in this one. Four more attempts from outside the arc. But Centenary, two more makes from the field and two more makes from downtown, has them ahead by two points still. First buzzer sounds inside the gold dome. 11.46 remaining in semifinal number two. Still to come today after a little bit of a break in the action will be both of the women's semifinal games. First one between Trinity University Tigers and the Shriner University Mountaineers and the nightcap will be Colorado College and the Texas Lutheran Bulldogs. But before that, the men will finish up play here and decide our matchup on Championship Sunday. It's Greenleaf, who has the ball with 10 seconds on the shot clock, going one-on-one -on -one against Altamirano, straight through his chest and finishes. Nice move and a nice finish with the left hand. Altamirano bringing the ball up the court. He's done so very frequently today for the Celts. A ton of minutes for Ricky Altamirano off the bench. He's passed the ball very, very well from his role outside the arc. Anderson will give to Altamirano in the corner. Gets the flyby. Thought about the shot, but a better one in the corner for Marion Williams. Is left a little short. Altamirano continuing to work hard. Gathers an offensive rebound. Shot clock resets now 15 for the Celts. Calvin Williams the fourth trying to free himself up. Marion Williams now eight on the shot clock. Calvin Williams forced to put something up and he misses it. Goes straight to Nick Anderson. Another opportunity on this possession. Marion Williams trying to get into the teeth of the defense but he's met with a ton of opposition and the ball gets knocked away. Greenleaf held by Marion Williams. Referee blowing his whistle a couple of times, trying to avoid any extracurricular. Will be a foul on Marion Williams, nothing more than that. So the referee is interjected, clean that up quickly. The ball will go to Centenary finally. Very good defensive possession, although the Celts were able to earn a couple more opportunities. So Thomas will bring it across the timeline this time for the Gents. Finally gives to Craig Collier. Angel Johnson defending him outside the three-point line. Pass to the corner. Hall inside. Nice feed to Greenleaf. Hangs in the air. Awkward positioning on the shot because he took the hit from Ricky Altamirano and earns the trip to the free throw line. Greenleaf headed to the free throw line. Junior out of Houston, Texas, just six foot four. Mentioned it early on today. Neither of these teams play with true stereotypical big men. Proven by Ricky Altamirano's presence outside the three-point line. His four attempts from beyond the arc today. Greenleaf, who surrenders quite a bit of size on the inside. Misses the first free throw, but has still been a force in the painted area. There's a second shot coming. It is up on its way and good. So 
So with almost 10 minutes remaining in this game, Gents extend their lead back out to five points. And it really feels like this Celts team has played from behind the entire way. I believe they have. Don't think they have held the lead at any point in this one. Altamirano gets the defender off his feet, finds Marion Williams in the corner. The pass is a little high, didn't hit him in his shooting pocket. Calvin Williams also gets the defender to fly by. Short on the floater, however. Got into the paint and shot from 10 feet, could not go. Collier will come back the other way quickly. He has a man in the corner. Beverly's shot is up and good! He cashes it. He went to the ground after the fact, but it didn't matter. He knocked it home and a huge shot for the Gents. Has this fan base up on its feet very briefly. Getting loud in here, trying to keep the energy on the defensive end of the court. Seth Thomas stays in front of Angel Johnson. Calvin Williams, the fourth, playing up top. He gives Altamirano, who will pull it again, and he'll answer. Ricky Altamirano desperately needed it, and he delivered. They have not been great from outside the arc, but now that's two made threes for Ricky Altamirano, both of them coming in this second half. He'll check Greenleaf the best he can. This one taken away, snatched out of nowhere by Calvin Williams, the fourth. Beverly trying to sweep through and take it away in transition. He's going to get tagged with a foul, and he's down on the court, face down at the moment, and took a shot. He rolls over as... About as soon as the athletic trainer gets to him, so the athletic trainer will make a long looping trek back to behind the centenary bench. Rolled over and is being helped off the court by his teammates now. Walking a little gingerly, but also bent forward a bit. Can't tell if he got hit in the face or if he might have taken a shot on one of his legs. Craig Collier, I think, calling for a substitute for Beverly. And finally, Mirage will head to the scorer's table. And finally, we'll get a full stoppage of play. A long delay there that ultimately will result in a timeout as Coach Dorsey is having a conversation with the referees who are going to go to the scorer's table. And I believe they'll review this to see what happened on that foul. Originally called a blocking foul in transition, but of course looked like Beverly was hit in the face as he stayed down on the court for a few minutes after the fact. Referees will walk away from the table, wait for an official ruling from the PA mic in the arena. But it seems like it's just a common foul that will go against Quentin Beverly. Nothing extracurricular after the fact. During that stoppage, Beverly did rejoin the team in the huddle. He's being Worked on by the athletic training staff from Centenary. Not quite yet into the games. Calvin Williams, the fourth, knocks down the first of two free throws. 
Cuts into the lead just a little bit. Still trailing here by four with 8.49 remaining. Second shot is up, and that one rattles out. So it'll stay at four. Seth Thomas gives off to Mirage, so we'll bring it across the timeline. Find Greenleaf at the top of the key. Straight away, he'll give to Thomas. Thomas thinks about it. He'll go one-on-one -on -one with Altamirano, trying to find an edge, but he cannot give it back. Collier to Greenleaf. This one almost stripped and taken away. Wide open in the corner is Mirage. He's forced to put it up at the end of the shot clock but he can't draw iron. This one tipped away in transition. Thomas catching it under the basket, but Nick Anderson getting back and knocking it out of bounds. A ton of traffic as the Celts were trying to get out and run in transition. Some contact. Ultimately, the basketball getting knocked up into the air and Centenary regaining possession very quickly. Greenleaf gives to Craig Collier. Thinks about the three, but will pull it out and give some Raj. Mirage back to Collier now. Right around the 15-foot mark, pulls up again, and it's money. Very smooth from the mid-range, Craig Collier. Claps his hands together in excitement. Energy right now for this Gents team. Altamirano ripping through, thinking about the three, catches again. Gives to Calvin Williams the fourth, who gives back to Altamirano. Loses the handle, 10 seconds still on the clock, but the Celts are going to have to go quick. It's going to be Ricky, or Williams the fourth, who rises up, kicks his legs out wildly, is able to hit rim, so no shot clock violation. A lot of contact right there. Coach Medina with his hands up in frustration as Thomas back the other way to Mirage, opposite wing. Hall, that one's up and it's good! AJ Hall ends that sequence with a make from downtown, and the Gents lead by nine. Altamirano catching outside, surveying, trying to find someone. Angel Johnson gives to Calvin Williams on the other side of the court, trying to find some edge. It's a little bit of a step, enough separation to get a shot off, but he leaves it short, and Seth Thomas, bringing it back the other way, loses it at half court. Calvin Williams off to Anderson, trying to go baseline, but he's denied by Greenleaf. Greenleaf knocked Anderson a little bit off balance right there. And whatever contact was present was enough to draw a whistle from the referees. Almost a minute 30 gone from the eight minute mark. We'll have our second to last media timeout. And since that previous media timeout, the Gents have grown their lead just a little bit. Nine point advantage with 6.39 remaining. Quentin Beverly, 10. Seth Thomas, 9. Craig Collier, 8. Jalen Bear, 6. Greenleaf and Hall, 5 apiece. On the other side, nine for Anderson, nine for Buffalo, eight for Calvin Williams the fourth, and eight for Ricky Altamirano. No one really jumping out of the box score on either of these squads, but very, very balanced scoring efforts. A lot of names that you have to try and shut down if you're playing defense against either of these squads. Right now, Centenary doing a better job of shutting down on the defensive end of the court. St. Thomas being held to less than 28% shooting from the field, just 17.4% from beyond the arc. Both of these teams shooting very well at the free throw line, 9 of 12 for St. Thomas. Centenary, half of those attempts, they've knocked down five of their six. St. Thomas will have an opportunity right now to cut further into this nine-point lead. The other side, Centenary trying to remain very stout defensively, get another stop, and get things back out to double digits. Right here they do. A.J. Hall playing the passing lane perfectly. He was anticipating he was going to get met at the rim. Nice job from Angel Johnson tracking back. 
and he disrupted A.J. Hall, who when he was trying to gather, lost the ball out of bounds. Altamirano gives to Marion Williams, back to Altamirano on the wing. Met there by A.J. Hall, and he'll have to back it out. Anderson straight away gives to Marion Williams, who will push through the opposite direction. Altamirano finds Nicholas Buffalo on the inside, and with that two-point make, he does hit his double-double. Very quick decision-making from Nicholas Buffalo right there. Went and shot it just as soon as he had caught it. Wasn't messing around on the inside at all that time. Greenleaf at the top of the key surveying. He'll give to Mirage. Mirage will pull it back and give back to Greenleaf. A little bit of a two-man game. He's pushing to the short corner, trying to go through Altamirano. Gets that one up over the top. It's off the rim, but he draws the foul. Altamirano listed at just six foot four on the roster in front of me. But from my vantage point, seems to have a little bit of a size advantage over Greenleaf, who is also listed at six foot four. Greenleaf has his first attempt. Miss well short. Doesn't even draw iron on that one. Greenleaf, not the greatest of free throw shooters. About 50% on the season from the charity stripe. Has his second one up on the way. He leaves it short as well. And a little bit more legs under it, but still off the front rim. Altamirano comes back the other direction. We'll give to Marion Williams. It's Collier steps out of the zone just a little bit. The front Williams deny any three-point opportunities. Anderson catching on the wing about three feet beyond that arc. Just five on the shot clock, though. Marion Williams forced to go because of the dwindling possession. And as he did, was met defensively. It was Mirage who got in his way, but a little bit too much contact as he was trying to shut down the driving lane. That's the seventh personal foul on Centenary. So now St. Thomas, who still trails by seven, will be in the bonus for the last five minutes and 12 seconds. It was just Mirage's first personal foul, but he's going to check out of the game. Beverly will come back. Marion Williams good on the first front end of the one and one is true, so he earns the second. Jalen Bear is going to head to the scorer's table for Coach Dorsey. He'll be ready to check in on a make. That one's up and no good. It's a little long, so Bear will have to wait just a moment at the scorer's table, but I'm sure he has no issue with that considering the missed free throw. Collier. Defers up top to Thomas, gives to Greenleaf. Thomas gets it back. Open from three if he wants it. Pulls it back, operating in the lane. Has to give it up to A.J. Hall. Step back three is up and good! Huge make from A.J. Hall. Finding his rhythm as he stepped back behind the three-point line. A lead nine again for the Gents. Altamirano surveying on the outside. Marion Williams to the corner. Angel Johnson met there by Greenleaf. Buffalo on the inside. Up and under is no good. He left it short on the right side of the basket. And the Gents with 420 lead by nine. And have the opportunity now with the ball to extend the lead to double digits. Hall to the basket, but it's rejected. Nick Anderson jumping out of bounds after it, but the referee blowing his whistle before he had the opportunity to save it said he stepped on the inline. So Seth Thomas will be set to inbound it. 16 seconds on the clock, the shot clock that is for Centenary. Thomas gets it back on the wing. Now with double digits, single digits now, rims out. Altamirano bringing it down the court. Has Anderson who will fire this one and needed it and got it. 
Nick Anderson caught that one. Didn't have a boatload of space on the perimeter, but he caught it very quickly, making the decision to let that one go from beyond the arc. It'll prompt a timeout. 3.53 remaining. This will serve as the final media timeout of the half. St. Thomas hasn't gotten a ton of great looks from three-point territory because of this zone, at least not early in the shot clock. They've more often than not deferred trying to find something better. But they've also had a lot of possessions where they've been forced at the end of the shot clock to put something up. The centenary look, 1-3-1, one, one, has done a very good job of running the Celts out of corners, being in shooters' faces when they catch on the wings. But that time, Nick Anderson, despite the presence of any defense, knew he wanted to shoot the ball, and he made it count. First buzzer sounds, so St. Thomas will head back out onto the court. Trailing by six, the last 3.53 shift of play upcoming. Second buzzer follows, and Centenary will return to the court. Seth Thomas set to inbound it. And St. Thomas setting up with some full court pressure. Get the ball into Collier, give it back to Thomas. Being checked by Nicholas Buffalo. Thomas straight away will receive a screen from Greenleaf. Buffalo doing a nice job moving and keeping himself in front of Seth Thomas on the perimeter. It got skipped to the outside, and Beverly was a little strong on the three. Kicked to Altamirano, thought about it very momentarily. Kick to Angel Johnson, who will take this one, and that one all but down, rims out for Angel Johnson, and Centenary controls it. That last three for Centenary. Attempts came from Craig Collier, who handles the ball now. Gives off to Greenleaf. Collier will go through as Seth Thomas comes to get the basketball now with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Collier to Greenleaf. Single digits, just about five. He'll have to go himself all the way to the rim with the left hand. He leaves it a little short. But a late whistle as Altamirano Gets caught underneath Greenleaf as he was coming to the ground. And it'll send Greenleaf to the free throw line. With that, Altamirano picks up his fourth personal foul. And we'll get another timeout here with 2.51 remaining. So coming out of this one, it'll be Greenleaf who will have two attempts at the free throw line trying to grow this centenary lead from six. However, Greenleaf in his last trip to the free throw line missed badly on the first of two, made an adjustment, but still was well short on his second look. Centenary, who was shooting very well from the free throw line, started five of six, but with those last two misses from Greenleaf, now just five of eight. Still good outside of that. 40% from the field, 40% from downtown. St. Thomas has not been able to find a rhythm on offense. Less than 30% from the field, 20%. Five of 25 from three-point territory. Been a very clean game outside of that, but these teams have just struggled a little bit to put the ball in the basket. 12 turnovers for St. Thomas and nine for Centenary. So that break is over. Greenleaf stepping out of his huddle back up to the free throw line.
Greenleaf short again on this one. But he had a little bit more air underneath it. Hit the front of the rim and bounced in. Taking his time on the second. It's up and it's out. It looked like it was in the cylinder just momentarily. Angel Johnson will bring it for the Celts. Loses his dribble but gets it over to Nick Anderson. Back to Johnson. Gives it to the corner. Marion Williams there going baseline, trying to kick. It gets deflected. Altamirano had it. Back to Williams. That one left well short. A very heavily contested shot as the shot clock was running down. Marion Williams had to hoist, but he couldn't draw iron, and Centenary was there to catch it underneath the basket. Seth Thomas ripping through as he's guarded by Nicholas Buffalo. Buffalo trying to stay in front. Crossover, and he gets the ball to the corner, and A.J. Hall with another huge three. He's knocked down a couple down the stretch, maybe none bigger than that. It sends the lead to 10, but Buffalo cuts into it almost immediately, back down to eight. Collier got the ball in very quickly, got the clock running. It'll continue to run as Beverly comes up the court, misses that one wide to the left, but the tip out to Collier and Centenary will have a second opportunity. Coach Dorsey racing down the sideline, wanting a timeout. Had to get right next to the referee before it was ultimately granted. The fans up on their feet here in the Gold Dome. Showed out in numbers this afternoon. And I think they are beginning to sense. It's really setting in. They're just one minute and 35 seconds away from moving along to Championship Sunday. Again, the winner of this game will play tomorrow against the Colorado College Tigers. And if it is the Centenary Gents, it'll be a couple of upsets here on semifinal Saturday as the number one seeded Trinity Tigers went down in the game that preceded this one. And currently, the number two St. Thomas Celts in danger of doing the same. They will need a stop right here with a minute 35 left, an eight point game. They're gonna have to be great on defense, really can't allow any more points. And they're gonna have to be almost automatic on offense down the stretch. Maybe a little contact there. Seth Thomas stumbled, but Altamirano doing his best to stay in front of him. A great find, though. Hall underneath the rim. Seth Thomas got all the way to the basket and then just dropped it off. It's 10 again. Double-digit lead as the Celts try to go quick. Buffalo knocks that one in. And he takes the hit. Off of the last few made baskets, the Celts have gotten out and run very quickly trying to avoid playing against a set defense for Centenary. And Nicholas Buffalo has been the benefactor of that type of offensive pace. This time, he earns the extra opportunity at the charity stripe. The crowd gonna let him hear it, and that one is gonna miss strong. Marion Williams trying to track down the board, but A.J. Hall controls it. Seth Thomas being hounded in the backcourt. A couple players around him, still time to get it across. And they do so with a couple of seconds to spare on the shot clock. Beverly trying to go to the basket. Struggled to get the ball up to the rim. Angel Johnson was holding him, however. So now, with almost 59 seconds remaining on the scoreboard, Quentin Beverly is going to head to the free throw line with another opportunity to stretch this lead out to double digits. take plenty of time in his routine. The first one is up and it's good. Referee's saying that the foul was on the floor as the Celts were moving on the interior on a one and one opportunity, but he knocked down the front end and he'll get the second. It's up and it's also good. Altamirano trying to get the ball up the court, maybe a little too aggressively. He throws it out of bounds along the sideline. 
Angel Johnson just couldn't track it down. And with that, a 10-point advantage and less than a minute to play feels like a pretty sure thing that the Centenary Gents are going to advance and play tomorrow in Championship Sunday. The Centenary Faithful given the hey, 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 goodbye chance to St. Thomas. I think they recognize that this one may be a little too far out of reach. What a performance the last two days from this Centenary team. Talked about the records in conference play for the teams at the top of the standings. St. Thomas at 12 and four, Trinity at 14 and two in conference play. And then there's a little bit of a gap. Centenary sitting in the three spot, nine and seven record. Despite the gap in these teams, one, two, and three, Centenary has absolutely, over the past two days, earned the right to play in the championship tomorrow. So much energy from this squad, from tip to final buzzer. It was a very close game. They needed every point they got yesterday as they took down Schreiner by just one. The crowd up on their feet as their gents hit the floor again for the last stretch of this ball game. AJ Hall pointing into the backcourt, likely to go retrieve it. It'll be Beverly who takes it in. He'll bring it across the timeline. Being hounded, pressured there, double team comes. Just trying to eat up as much clock as possible. Altamirano pressuring Seth Thomas. Kicks it to the corner. A.J. Hall, exclamation mark. Sidney up 13, and there's not enough time for the comeback. The Celts bring it across the timeline. Williams gives off to Anderson. He'll hoist, doesn't find the iron, and the crowd in Shreveport is loud. 30.6, just six tenths separating shot and game clock, but it's a formality. Centenary will have the opportunity almost to run out this clock. Seth Thomas still being hounded. The Celts showing the effort that got them to this point this year. It earned them a bye. But in the men's semifinals, as A.J. Hall goes to the basket, the common thread is that you wanted to play in the quarterfinals. You wanted a day to figure out this gym. At least that was the case for Colorado College. Who won yesterday against the University of Dallas. Got used to the Gold Dome and won again today over the Trinity University Tigers. These centenary gents however certainly used to this gold dome as Greenleaf knocks that one home at the free throw line adding a couple more to his tally just 10 point sex on the clock Centenary certainly could not mind playing an extra game especially in front of this crowd so much support behind them Marion Williams will hoist that one. It's long off the back rim. Angel Johnson, his follow is good, but it's still going to be a 13-point victory for the Centenary Gents as that one gets tipped up. No foul coming, and the final buzzer sounds. The Centenary Gents will head on to Championship Sunday. Tomorrow, they will play the Colorado College Tigers. Matchup between the three and four seeds in the Southern Collegiate Athletic Conference 2024 Men's Basketball Tournament. A couple of upsets on the men's side. Down go the number one and two seeds. There will not be a Trinity Tiger or a St. Thomas Kelt playing in this championship this year. The first time in several seasons that that will be the case. 
as Centenary celebrates with its fans, and they deserve it. Again, a tremendous showing in the last two days out of these gents. It was A.J. Hall who was a huge boost in yesterday's one-point victory off the bench. Got his number called much earlier today, and he led the way with 16 points. He shot four of seven from three and knocked down some really big ones. Quentin Beverly added 12. Seth Thomas, a steady nine. On the other side, Nicholas Buffalo had 15. Nick Anderson with 12, but it just wasn't enough to push the Celts through. So we have our men's field set. Conference will present some of its postseason awards, including player of the year and so on. So they set the table up at half court. But while they do so, a little bit of a break will be taken. And then the women will continue in their bracket. A couple of semifinal matchups, the first of which will be between the Trinity University Tigers and the Shriner Mountaineers. That'll be followed by the Colorado College Tigers and the Texas Lutheran Bulldogs. What fantastic action we had in the first two games today. We hope for much of the same out of the women. But we'll take a break here on the stream and we'll be back with you at 5 o'clock for a tip in the women's tournament. Appreciate you joining us. My name is Luke Terry. Hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.